Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherill and I am a fourth generation witch. Today's video means that spring is coming because we are discussing the vernal equinox, which the Wiccans call Ostara. I want to discuss with you the old ways that I would celebrate Ostara and any new traditions that you can create for your family to celebrate Ostara in the days to come. So with that, let's get on to a little bit of background. Well, what is Ostara? Of course, it is the vernal equinox. And what this means is that the sunlight hours and the night hours are of equal length. The sun is directly above the equator and this happens twice a year. In the spring, and this is why it's called vernal, which is spring, and in the autumn, the autumn equinox, which is around the 20th of September or thereabouts. Now this heralds the first day of spring, although Wiccans have already heralded the first day of spring on Imolc. The vernal equinox occurs at 3.33 p.m. in the afternoon on the third month of the year. So there's a lot of threes going on here. So I wanted to speak here about the number three and just say that this is rather an auspicious vernal equinox. Three is also an incredibly sacred Anglo-Saxon number, as we'll look at later, to show you how special this Ostara is going to be. Ostara, the name, comes from the German goddess Ostara and she had a head and shoulders of a hare and very Germanic and ancient she was too. There is some evidence to show that the Anglo-Saxons had their own version of Ostara who also had a hare as her totem. The word Ostara comes from the word Istra. Another name for Ostara, which is where we get the word oestrogen from, and it has roots in the word east, which is of course the direction of the rising sun. And so Ostara essentially is a goddess of the east and a goddess of the rising sun, bringing hope and joy and life and light into this world. So a very special goddess, really. The German goddess Ostara, who has the head and shoulders of a hare, is very much sort of represented throughout the goddesses of the Western world, which can be seen in Hecate, Holder, and the goddess Freya, all of whom have hares as their totems. And there is obviously a hare symbolism that runs through the springtime goddesses. The hair is also a very traditional old symbol and it is, of course, a symbol of spring and fertility. Where I live, there's very, very few rabbits. Uh, we mostly only see hares and the dogs are always after them. They never, ever catch them because, of course, hares are too quick and the way they turn is uh, beautiful to behold. We did see some hares the other day boxing in the fields and this is not male hares as was been fought for many years fighting over each female. It is actually the females <laughs> keeping back the over amorous male hare who is trying to press his suit a bit too much and you know females don't like that so take note everyone but it is a really fascinating sight to behold and I suggest you all go outside and have a look to see if you can find those hares. The hares are very much part of Easter and we can see them in the Easter bunny that has come down to us today producing their baskets of eggs because of course eggs are also a fertility symbol and this is the time of year, is it not, when fertility is really ratcheting up and almost at its peak. The birds are nesting, they're laying their eggs and we would have had an abundance of eggs in days of yore. And these would have been used in all sorts of ways to celebrate as offerings, as gifts. So let's look at how we might celebrate Ostara. Now the West Country of the UK where I live is deeply pagan. You can see it in the amount of stone circles that scatter the land around me. And the old Druidic temples and wells, etc. 
It is a beautiful part of the world to live in, and we have a very deep pagan belief. Even the churches are covered with um, aspects such as the green man, the triple hair, which is an incredibly old sign. There are many hair and Ostara stories that go hand in hand at this time of year, but I wanted to give you one which is based in the West Country of the UK, right where I live. It was announced amongst the animals that the goddess was going to hold a great party in honour of the spring. Each animal was in a flutter of excitement and the animals were discussing amongst themselves what gift they could produce. Hare loved the goddess and he was so excited to know that she was having a party in honour of spring and for the animals. So he ran back to his scrape and had a look and see if he had anything to give her. He looked in his larder and the shelves were bare. As he looked along he opened the cupboards and there was nothing inside them. Eventually he looked to the top shelf and on there was an egg. Hare carefully reached up and pulled down the egg from the top shelf. He then spent the next two days decorating the egg as best as he was able in the hope that the goddess would accept this gift from him. At the party each of the animals went up and presented their wonderful gifts to the goddess. She received gold and silver, great jewellery and sapphires and many items that each animal had carefully found, polished up and given to her. Hare was humble though. He did not wish to see his gift amongst the glittering array that everyone else had produced. So he came last to present his gift and he humbly held up the egg and placed it in her hands. And it was at this point that the goddess could see the true worth of hair, and she blessed him. Because he had given everything that he owned. I love that story. It's a great one for Ostara. The hair trinity is also an ancient symbol of the vernal equinox. It's found in some Chinese cave paintings the whole way across Europe through every area that has a hair. This is a symbol of course where you can see three hairs and each hair has two ears but there are only three ears in total. And it is a great symbol of Ostara and I think it's beautiful. There's lots of churches around this part of the world that has this symbol in it. We love being pagan down here. Ostara is essentially a time of balance. Because the day and the night are of equal length, you can bring balance and harmony to your spells. So this is a great time to cast spells, for example, to heal an unbalanced relationship. If you feel that the partners of the relationship are not working together as a true team, you can cast a spell to help them come together as that team and bring balance back to your life. Those old-fashioned labyrinths which wind in and wind out are all about bringing balance and harmony, winding in the days and winding them back out again. And if you walk a labyrinth on the vernal equinox, you will surely get great benefit and joy from it. Likewise, Ostara is about fertility, and so if you wish to bring children into your life, I want to give you a very simple spell with which to do so. Find yourself some white eggs. Draw on the egg symbols of children, whatever you feel appropriate. So you can draw a rattle, a cradle, a baby itself on the egg. Then I want you to cast a circle and place the egg in the center of the circle. Put your intent onto the egg to ask for more children to come to you or a single child, whatever your requirements are. Then take that egg and bury it outside as a gift for Mother Earth and she will hear your pleas and your cries and help you have children come in to your life. 
I love that spell. It's a very simple one to do. That is why we give eggs to other people. It is a symbol of fertility. In ancient times, ploughmen would bury the eggs in the soil to bring fertility for the crops in the coming year. And of course, don't those coloured eggs look charming wherever they are? Traditionally, for an old ways witch, this is the time of year that you would make your new broom. And new brooms are made from birch trees. And the reason why is because birch is the, generally the first tree into leaf in this season. So it has a symbolic of great spring and vigour and fertility. And you would take the newly cut birch twigs and bind them onto a hazel handle and this becomes your new besom for the year. I need one actually. Mine's looking a bit raggedy around the edges and I better get a new one. I'm not going to make it myself because I'm a bit rubbish. I'm just going to buy it. But I will bless it and cleanse it and make sure it's made of birch. Another perfect spell for the vernal Xbox is your spring cleaning. Now is the time really to shake out the old. This is to make way for the new. Make way for the new spells that you're going to bring to your home in the coming year. If you clear out and cleanse the whole of your home at this time now, it can get rid of those spells that haven't worked quite in the way that you expected them to and therefore clean that energy, get it ready for the fourth coming manifestations that you are going to make because of course this is spring we're fertile manifest away everyone great time to do it so this is a very traditional old way spell that i'm going to give for the solitary practitioner which you'll need some milk some honey and a purple green and yellow candle these are the colors of spring and if you're finding difficulty getting hold of these i use um if you can see here these are birthday cake candles which come in all sorts of colours and um, are extraordinarily cheap. They're only about a pound as opposed to buying spell candles, which I have seen going for vast amounts of money on the internet. I can't be dealing with spending any money on this. I don't think it's appropriate. What you should do is go outside and take off your shoes and socks and feel the earth through your feet. Cast a circle around where you stand and then with your milk and honey, stir it into a bowl together. Pour this bowl on the earth as an offering to the goddess and then light your candles. Let them fire and flame and manifest anything that you are acquiring at this time. You can blow the candles out, you don't need to let them burn down and your spell is cast. Of course, Ostara is traditionally a celebration and what you do at a celebration is have a feast. If you can use anything that involves eggs in this feast, so much the better because you're bringing in the symbolism. Do follow me on Patreon for further witchcraft learnings and tips. There's plenty on there, must be something for you. And in the meantime, if you have any traditions that you yourself practice at Astara, I would love to know. Do leave me your traditions in the comments below. I do enjoy reading them. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe as it really helps and I will see you in a few days.